Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Look at that right there. Beautiful sunrise. Birds are out and feeding. Always a great sign. When the birds are feeding, that means nature's in a good mood today. They're hungry and it uh, feels amazing. We're out here fishing in the San Bernard area, which is from a few weeks ago, back in September when I said, you know, I'm hunting for a new flounder honey hole. And we had a pretty decent day, got on some reds, got on some flounder. That was this area. So those cold fronts have come through. Uh, we've been getting good reports from buddies that this area is active, which is kind of, you know, we obviously know that, um, but we've been putting off coming out here because it's a little bit of a far drive. <clears throat> so. Uh, very excited today. I don't want to say I'm expecting to get on fish, but uh, I'm kind of expecting to get on fish. So let's go ahead and put this away, get some B-roll and get to our spot. Just saw some bait jumping over here. Could totally be the birds spooking things. Those bait fish and little baits, their eyes look up because they're constantly worrying about getting attacked from below by the fish and getting attacked from above by the birds. Those kind of guys, those guys kind of work in harmony with one another. And when the fish spook it up, the birds scoop it up. Let's see if I can get a nice bite here. Tide's pushing me back this way, so I want to cast and work my lure in towards myself. Let's see, come on. Give me something spicy here. You can see up ahead as well, man. There's just so much activity here on the water today. Oh man, yeah, right there. That little school of bait is getting worked up from something down there. And you can see that that school just goes right back down once they feel safe. They only come up to the top when something's down there messing with them. Let's go ahead and keep it moving. Thought maybe we get lucky here. No cigar. It's awesome to see that bait active today though. There we go. I keep saying, all right, let's go. No shot, not when you're seeing that. All right, no luck there on either one of my money lures, but I'm keeping these guys down here in the ready position because it's a one of them days, man. One of them days where everything seems to be on fire. I mean, look at those birds, man. I love seeing those birds working. They can be kind of annoying with their squawking, but uh, honestly, it's more like music to my ears. It's not even annoying. I don't know why I said that. Love those birds. Just now arriving at our spot here, and we've got some really great water movement right now. So as we drift in, slowly but surely, I wanna make some casts here and see if there's any fish hanging around the shallows and those grass points where that bait can get kind of worked up. I do wanna fish slow, but there's oyster down there. So it's one of those things where you really gotta find your place in the water column that you can float over them. Okay, we're gonna slow this kayak down. You wanna dance on the oyster. Don't wanna stomp on it. You gotta remember there's tons of gar out here as well. I'm on one. It feels like a little fella. Oh yeah, it's totally a little fella. Come here, buddy. Oh, sand trout. Go ahead and get a little buddy off here. I had a guy comment that he caught a 17 inch sand trout. Is that even possible? I have never seen a sand trout that big. I think maybe the max is like 14 inches that I've ever seen personally. Y'all let me don't know down in the comments. Mike Hoganator, I remember your name. You always comment. 17 inch sand trout, bro, that's insanity. I've never heard of such a thing. Come on, give me my hook back, bud. Come on, there we go. You go keep crushing them, little guy. Nice fish, definitely a flounder here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's our flounder boy. Come here, man. 
go. You don't want to be in this net, don't you? Doesn't appear to be a keeper. Just shy there, but target species, right on the money, baby. Exactly where I expected to find them. Here in a choke point, we got bait definitely getting pushed through here, holding on to that nice shallow grass line. And look at this. This is what I'm talking about with flounder. I don't know if y'all can see that hook set, but there pretty much isn't one like that. <laughs> Delicate little finger touch there. Look at this guy. Cute little buddy. You go on now. I know you hate that net. <laughs> Let's go find us a keeper. And this right here, y'all, is exactly what I was saying. Like, literally, first maybe, I don't know how many casts we've done, but hasn't been but a handful. And we've just gotten on flounder after flounder after flounder. I knew that we were having it slow back in September, but that come full swing doesn't keep. Let them go. You let that flounder run come full swing and you're going to be catching them left and right over here. Just such a very productive area for flounder. Now I'm honestly going to make a cast right here. Just see because they will hold to this structure and the moving water coming through it. It's just beautiful. Beautiful screams flounder to me. As long as we don't get snagged on nothing. Oh, nice flounder here. Not even? Oh, yeah. Let's try and be smart about this one, y'all. Get him in the net. This could be our keeper here. Don't get under in that motor, please. Oh, this is a nice flounder, Pop. Measure it. See if it's a new PG. Uh, I don't know about all that, but definitely a keeper. It might be. It might be 17 point something. Come on up, bud. Oh, he's got hooked. I'm gonna keep this no matter what. He's gonna die. Uh, did we bring the bag or no? I'll figure out a way to keep it. I mean, if you can, then yeah, that's good. But I know I already saw him shooting out blood while I was reeling him in. Nice flounder, let's tend to him really quick. Let's try and quickly put this guy out of his misery. I know there's a spot for it. Should be a little bit close. Yeah, right, right around there. And then go towards, there you go. There you go, you got it. Perfect execution guys. I feel really good about that Because uh, homeboy was out of the water for a little while suffering all those convulsions you're seeing is just His neural canal being severed his brain being shut off And now for any of those of you who are kind-hearted out there homeboy's not feeling any pain and uh, We don't have to worry about him flopping around while we're cutting our jig head out of him because he really got it in there on top of that, for uh, fish and seafood connoisseurs, he's going to taste really good because of that. He's not going to have all that stress hormone in his meat. And now I can rip this jig head without feeling super bad about mutilating a fish while he's currently still feeling and breathing. Oh yeah, that's going to have to get cut out with the uh, fillet knife. Let's just go ahead and get him handled. Uh, actually, let's get him measured too. So the official measurement on our flounder. Not my new PB, but a good solid 16 incher. That's beautiful. That is beautiful if I've ever seen it. Alrighty y'all. We've got our flounder here in tow. Nice 16 incher. Ikeji made technically Ikeji made you would throw him in an ice slurry so this is like a half-assed version but again we weren't intending on keeping fish today it's just I refuse to put a fish down there that's all jacked up I'm thinking I might do blackened fish with like a corn a sweet corn risotto I saw a video on corn risotto with scallops blackened looked super good and I want to try to make that with my fish
Guys, I thought I had a big and freaking piece of petrified wood over here. Oh man, I thought that was a nice fish. I was like, he's not fighting great. <laughs> Let's get this dang thing off. Isn't there a bunch of oyster up here as well? Right where you're at, yes. And every right oh, that was a fish. That was a fish. No, guys. Oh, 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 man. That was a good flounder. Oh man, I tried so hard. Okay, you know what that tells me? Loosen drag a couple clicks. Loosen that drag a couple clicks, man, because those guys are pulling. Flounder usually don't give you that much trouble, but the big ones, they will. And I have a feeling the way that guy came and whacked it, the way he took off, should have been pulling drag if I had it set right. Would have been a nice catch. Possibly my new PB. I'm not going to think that though, because it'll make me feel bad. Just keep fishing. What is this, a trout? Oh, baby. Oh my gosh, guy, take it easy, man. Nice. Nice little speck trout. He's a male, you can hear him grunting down there. Oh god, I looked down and saw that freaking flounder. I kind of forgot he was there. The little buddy swimming off. Nice. Oh man, I already knew it, man. As soon as I saw those birds feeding, I knew it was going to be a good day. We've got a lot of fishing ahead of us, and I'm already happy. I mean, I was happy when I got out here, but I'm ecstatic now. Oh, was I not recording? <laughs> man. Here I am freaking out, dude, having such a good day. Uh, truthfully, guys, okay, calm down, buddy. I'm trying to record here, huh? Jeez, savage little guy. Here I am talking, man, just so happy, so ecstatic to be out here. Just got our slam on the day. Nice little redfish, man. It's truthfully blessed. Just got to praise God on days like this. Say thanks because it makes all those other tough days of fishing just... You know, it's like a nice reward for grinding through everything and enduring the tough ones. Not a keeper. Okay, we're actually getting blasted right now, right into the oyster. That one's coming in. I don't even care. Look at him. Nice blue tail there. Cute little fella. You get on down there. <laughs> you gonna splash me, man? Trying to take off of my grips. You get on awesome all right guys i truthfully believe this gulp belongs in a hall of fame somewhere probably on my wall uh because wow gulps are notorious for just being horrible uh as far as longevity goes they just fall apart on you this freaking gulp right here has caught us a legit texas slam and then some he's caught a couple undersized flounder too and a sand trout how wild is that Usually I maybe catch two fish if I'm lucky. This gulp has definitely gone the distance for us today. And you know what? You know what? In honor of that, it may be meaningless to everyone else out there, but I truthfully have a connection with this gulp. I can't send him back out there to suffer any more damage. Truthfully, a legend. And he is now being retired. I don't want to lose this. He's going on the wall. That gulp right there deserves to retire while he still has himself somewhat intact. I'm a little something here. It feels very small. <laughs> nice little flounder. Come here, pal. Killing these guys out here today, man. Literally and figuratively. Oh no, dude. Dude, don't get caught up in your family. 
right, let's go ahead and quickly get this guy off. Solid hook set on the little one. Don't worry, bud. Where we get you? Right there in the side of the mouth. Can I get that back? Did I have that back, bruh? I'm sorry, dude. There we go. Swam off. Got him pretty quickly. And, uh, okay. Not so much damage on the gulp. It's a little jacked, but definitely still workable. Let's get it. Let's get it, dude. Love that guy's TikTok. Cooks up some fire food. Feels like we got a good fish here. Oh yeah, another nice flounder. All right, buddy. Oh yeah, another keeper here. Get him on board. Hey, the kitty see, amigo. Check that out, y'all. Nice flounder. Got his little camo spots on him. Real son of a gun was flopping around in here, busting my dang loop knot off. Thank goodness he didn't hop out on us. And I've noticed that when you're using big minnow imitations like this, like your bigger swim bait, tossing our hoagies right here. Oh my god, what is that? This guy just spit up. Look what he just spit up here. What? Big old men Hayden. Yeah. Shimmer swimmer would probably kill it out here if they would still make them the same way. Get your food back in you, bro. You need that. Eat that. Get that in your gullet. You need to grow up and get big on us. Definitely a keeper. Uh, he'll go back down there. I hope he eats his meal. I don't want to rob him of his calories. Had to work for those, and we just put him through some work ourselves. But awesome day on the water, man. Uh, I can tell you what, we've been out here for a little bit. The bite has slowed down. We lost all of our gulps, but I don't even care. It's going to be a great video. Um, you know, unless something freaking insane happens on our way out of here and we catch our new PB, uh, maybe another keeper. Y'all will see me at the house getting ready to cook up that blackened flounder with sweet corn risotto. So stay tuned if that sounds tasty to you. Welcome to the kitchen, you guys. As promised, we've got right here all the ingredients for our sweet corn risotto. Look at those, it's a big shallot. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start sipping on some wine, get everything prepped up real quick, and I'll show you guys how we're gonna make this. So we've got mostly everything prepped up here. Our four ears of corn that have been shucked up. Those are nice and good, so I'm about to scrape those off, but before we do that, eight cups of chicken stock right here. You just wanna keep this on a low heat right there. I'm gonna put it on two. Get that nice and centered, perfect. And now we're gonna go ahead and get these corns off their cob here. I've never done this, so um, I know it's supposed to be like a vertical deal. All right guys, so once your cob is completely done, get the rest of that stuff off the bone. Did I just say bone? It's not a bone. Get it off the cob. Get all that nice corny, juicy sweetness in there. It's really gonna help to add that sweet corn flavor to our risotto. And I don't know if I said in the intro, but we're doing this with blackened flounder. The recipe that I saw that inspired this dish was done with blackened scallops, but uh, I've never actually even eaten scallops, I don't think. And I don't know where to get fresh scallops around here, so uh, my mom actually is a lot better at this than me. So yeah, let me go ahead and let her finish up. And look, yeah, show you how you're supposed to do it. You make it look easy. I was super, I have like a weird fear of knives. When I was a little kid, someone chased me around with a knife. So now I have like this irrational fear. Some kid when we lived in Fort Worth. That was like one of my first memories. Did you know the kid? Yeah, he, it was in the middle of the night. He spent the night. And he had a knife in our house? I think it 
was a butter knife, to, to be honest, but I was still scared to shit on me. Like, I was a tiny, probably like, I don't know how old was I in Fort Worth pre-K, right? So with our cobs right here on our stock pot, let's go ahead and turn that up. I want to get this cranked to a nice little simmer. It is already warm. I've been warming it off camera while I was prepping everything, but get your, oof, really warm. Go ahead and get your corns in there and let them start to release some of that sweet corn. Yeah, whatever, they get it. Uh, you want to start releasing that sweet corn flavor into your broth. So while you got your cobs over here, warming up and infusing with that chicken stock in the stock pot, go ahead and get on medium heat here. Get about two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter here. Go ahead and let that get going. Give ourselves a, give that a second to melt down and come up to heat. Into your saucepan right here, once your butter's nice and getting there on medium heat. We got two shallots in here, three shallots, but one was really big. And then three cloves of garlic, finely minced there. And we're gonna put these in, trying to get all of that. Yeah, that's not that serious. We're gonna saute these bad boys for a couple minutes, two to three minutes. And then we'll get back to you. Now this has been going for two minutes, three minutes, and we're gonna go ahead and add those four ears of corn into here. I do wanna get all this. It's really important We get a lot of corn in there. We really want to have that corn flavor in here. I think that sweet will go great with the savory, kind of spicy, almost blackened seasoning. So let's get this in here, and we're gonna saute this for about 10 minutes. Get yourself some salt. We've got some pink Himalayan stuff here. Just get yourself a pinch of salt. A little more. And we're gonna let that go for 10 minutes to kind of sweat that corn out a bit. So corn has been going for about 10 minutes now. I'm just gonna take and reserve about half a cup. That looks right. It looks like about half a cup. And we're gonna use that later, mix it with some cream and some stock and make like a nice creamy corn puree. Go ahead and get that off of there. And this pan's looking a little dry. I'm probably gonna take a little bit of butter. Maybe you should have went with a little more olive oil if you guys are following along at home and you haven't started cooking already. Let's just get that butter nice and mixed in there. All right, that butter's getting close. Now, right here we have a cup of arboreal rice, which is like the Italian style rice. And we're just gonna saute this for two to three minutes. Get everything nice and mixed in there. And look at that, man. Oh, it looks so good. It smells so good. Two to three minutes. So that rice has been getting nice and toasted and getting to know that uh, corn in there for about three minutes. We've got half a cup of white wine right here. Use a dry white wine. We're gonna go ahead and deglaze our pan with that. And we're gonna cook out all of that alcohol in there. So give this another two to three minutes. Let that rice kind of soak it up while simultaneously deglazing. Now that our rice has kind of absorbed some of that wine and most of the alcohol is out, we're gonna go ahead and start slowly but surely. I'm gonna go ahead and time this because it's something that you kind of just watch and I've never really actually timed it before. Please hurry because this is gonna start burning and you wanna add in chicken stock, ladle by ladle, and you gotta just be patient with this. I've tried to make risotto in the past and it was uh, one of those things where I was trying to be real quick and taking the lazy route, not being patient, and my risotto turned out to like this kind of subpar al dente. What you're really going for here is a very smooth and creamy, almost like a mashed potato, but like, with rice. I don't know if that makes sense. Those of you guys who have had risotto, get what I'm saying, but we're gonna really take our time. I'm guesstimating probably 30 minutes, 25 minutes, and just slowly add in ladle by ladle of your chicken stock here until your rice has completely absorbed it. And I'll give y'all one example here in a second once I uh, think it looks right. 
All right, so if you look at this, we take our spatula and you can see there's no liquid in there. When you go across, no liquid running in the middle. That's how you know time for your next, oh gosh, I didn't start my timer. Next ladle is ready. And to give you an idea of what it looks like while it's not ready, let me just show y'all really quick. See how it's flowing back into itself there? Kind of goes right back. And that's how you can know. Plus you could just look, stuff seeping up that's not ready for more stock. After about 30 minutes, all of those, well, almost all eight cups of our chicken stock has been incorporated into the risotto. And it'll look like this. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on low heat because I really don't want to simmer out all of that stock just yet. I kind of want it to be creamy. That is what the expert said when I was watching how to do this. So inside of this cup, we've got a half a cup of our stock in there. So you want to reserve half a cup of your chicken stock and then another half of cup, half a cup of your choice of cream, heavy whipping cream. And all we're gonna do is take our corn here. Can I borrow this really quick? Get that corn that we left over into a blender. Like so. And then add our cream and chicken stock mixture into that. And we're going to puree this up very quickly. Let me get my blender. All right, and you wanna go until you start to smell your motor burning out on you. Just kidding, that's not a good idea, but just get it nice and pureed up. And finally, smells glorious. Dump this last bit in. And at about this point, you want to start to season or taste for season. So we've got some salt in there. I do need to add pepper. Let me take over. Just get this nice and just all incorporated there. And this right here, this is what my risotto did not look like last time. So last time it was very stiff and gelatinous and the Italians that created this said, you need to have it, it has to be a little bit fluid in there, it has to be a little liquidy. So there is a trick to this though. It does look very liquidy, but we're gonna put a lid on it and let it go while we're finishing up our fish. It's good or no? So taste it, doubled up, We've got two different opinions. We're just gonna have, I love pepper, and that's why I say season the taste. Some people don't like pepper that much, I love it. I overload everything with pepper. Yeah. It's not al dente like the last time, yeah. Definitely take your time with allowing that rice to absorb all of the stock as you go very creamy texture at the end and you're not getting that crunchy almost bite from the al dente rice all in there all nice and smooth texture Let's give this a taste i'm gonna need some more pepper There goes Percy. You saw him in one of these at the last couple uploads. Like I said, when we do the cooks, he always comes around thinking he can score some food. Now all you need is for your sous chef to take over and keep that stirring for you while you come and get your pan ready for the... Uh... I love how you've given me the title sous chef. Well, you're not the main chef. That's me. Over to the stove top. Let's heat up this pan. Nice cast iron skillet. 
Get that nice and hot. I'm gonna put it to like six here. And to that, let's give a little olive oil and a generous amount of butter here. And the amount of butter you put into this is really relative to how much fish or scallop or shrimp, whatever you're cooking, however much of that you're using. Put that amount of butter. I'm just gonna throw a load in there. So our butter is over here getting nice and hot on us. I wanted to kind of get that nice little vanilla color, caramel brown. And here is the star of the show, that flounder we caught earlier, or yesterday. And we just want to hit that with a generous amount of black and seasoning. I love this stuff, and I think it's going to go great with our super sweet summer corn, sweet corn risotto. All right, you guys, there you go. You can see that butter is starting to brown. Ooh, I accidentally got a little water in the pan. And all we're gonna do is get each and every one of these fillets in there. Cook it for about, we're probably only gonna need to do a minute on each side because we've let this pan come up to heat. So let's get these fillets. Risotto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On um, medium low? Medium low. And then we put it on the... Here, I'll just come show everyone. So right here we've got, oh, there's a little bit of cheddar left in that from our mac and cheese cook that we'll have on the other channel, but get a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. I'm gonna get that in there. And get the good quality stuff. Just gonna, yeah, we'll just, well, I don't wanna get that cheddar, but let me use up a good, uh, about the rest of it, yeah. And we're just gonna mix that in there. You could have done it. I was just gonna come show them. Look at that, oh boy, oh boy. It smells delightful. All right, I gotta go tend to the fish. Over here on our fish, it's been going for maybe a minute. We can get these smaller fillets over here and just go ahead and flip them. Oh my gosh, guys, it looks so good. Okay, 17 right now. We'll pull these off at yeah, 718. Call it up there. Ton of butter. Honestly wasted a bunch, but we're about to be going out of town for a little while. So that food, all of this stuff is gonna go to waste anyways if we don't use it now. That's why I just dumped in a load of it, but it does make it easier to cook. It kind of almost bastes itself. You just swash it around in the pan there. Beautiful. Now it's 718. I'm gonna go ahead and start by pulling off these smaller fillets from the small side of the flounder. Those of you guys who live out here and catch flounder, you know what I'm talking about, the, the little side. Those fillets tend to cook a bit quicker. And look at that, oh my gosh, guys, it looks so good. This one's probably about done as well. You know what, I'll give this one a little bit of extra time. Actually, I don't wanna overcook it. A little bit of undercooked flounder never hurt nobody. You make ceviche out of that stuff, they never really get parasites in that right there. Let's go ahead and give it a little dab. Don't want all that nasty grease on us. All right, now here comes the fun part, you guys. We're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a cutting board. We're in the final countdown, and that's when the kitchen starts to get a little messy. Try and organize as we go here. But we're gonna take our cutting board. Clean that off. This right here is Italian flat leaf parsley. So get yourself a little bit of that just for garnish but it also serves as a great seasoning. It has that nice parsley taste. Classic Italian season. We'll just give this a rough chop. The parsley's nice and chopped up. And finally, something that always goes good with a creamy dish. Think of like a baked potato. Some very, very, very thinly sliced chives. Just go ahead and get these guys ready to up. There we 
go. Plenty of finely chopped chives there. Uh, honestly, probably should have just chopped up all these. Like I said, they're gonna go to waste, but I wish I had a dehydrator. You could just chop up everything, dehydrate it, put it in a little, little thing, and then boom, you got your own dry seasonings. Now we come to our flounder. Nice flounder filet there, bada boom. Small sprinkle of, oh my gosh, I sprinkled that so bad. <laughs> Whatever, that's fine. And then we can redeem ourselves with our chives here. All right, y'all. Last piece of the puzzle here is just squeeze a bit of lemon over your fish. Don't gotta go too crazy. Just get a little bit of citrus acid in there. I'll take it. Some napkins. Mm. Alright, we're recording. So first off, let's just get a look at that plate. Delightful. First taste test. I'm gonna go ahead and eat my piece and just I'll show you guys. Look, the perfect tender fish there with that nice creamy risotto. Bottoms up. I like it. Really good, really creamy. You got the sweet from the corn risotto, and then the nice savory seasoning from that flounder and the blackened seasoning. The chives and the parsley are there, dancing around on the tongue a little bit. It's really good stuff. I would definitely recommend. What do you guys think? <laughs> I really like blackened anything in the flounder. Yeah. It's uh, Have you not overcooked, had... that's for sure. Have you ever had scallops? Yes. Okay, now I finish my bite. It's really delicious. Okay. <laughs> so the original recipe was with scallops, like we said earlier. I've never had scallops, so I can't tell you if that would be better. But this tastes really good on its own. Maybe we could try shrimp with it sometime, or we could just try and get scallops. I don't know. But that's going to go ahead and do it for the end of the video, you guys. Thank you if you stuck around to the end, watched the cook. I usually do these videos separate, but I wanted to do a classic, true catch and cook. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of y'all's day. Peace.